So, you've been thinking about hopping over to an arch distro for your daily driver for a while now, but you just can't commit yourself because you don't want the responsibility to build your own distro from the ground, or you think that committing yourself to using Arch or an Arch-based distro as your daily driver for any amount of time will have you toiling away for hours trying to fix some unknown out-of-this-world issue. Well, do not fret, my friends, for I may have a solution or two for you. So, the first question I put forward for you, my dear friend, is the type of involvement you want with your distro. Do you want to just have a plug-and-play kind of Arch distro, or are you looking for a more customised and user-involved setup and use case? Well, you have a couple of options for both of these. But first, some info. In the past, and still to this day, many people have always toted about how people who use vanilla Arch are always the brainiacs of Linux users, with some of them having their biggest mouths too. But in today's world of the year 2022, this is no longer the way, and now there are dozens of customised and vanilla Arch install scripts that are always just a couple commands off of being present and ready on your personal install. Putting the old Arch stereotype of you having to be some sort of Linux guru to sleep. Though, installing Arch through the wiki is not actually as difficult as a few people may make it out to be. Hell, even I can learn how to install Arch Linux step by step. And if I did it, you can definitely do it. Okay, okay, you might be thinking, but I don't want to install vanilla Arch through someone's grimy installation script or type commands into the terminal like a pleb. I want Arch, and I want it now. Alright, alright. Well, in that case, you are in luck, as there are a few pretty decent Arch-based distros that you may find to your liking. So, let's go over some of the best ones, in my personal opinion, of course. The first Arch-based distro you should check out if you haven't already is Manjaro. Regardless of what you may see on the Mongolian basket weaving forums or YouTube channels with more subscribers than numbers I can read, Manjaro is a pretty good and complete Arch based distro that I myself have used as a daily driving operating system for a couple of months now and have had no major issues with it. There have been a couple issues, of course, just like any Linux distro you might use, like a couple times where the KDE Plasma desktop environment I'm using just didn't start for whatever reason, or a few video games installed through the Steam platform just not working, though that's probably down to a Steam issue or some tinkering needed on my part. But for the vast majority of tasks like web browsing, playing most video games, writing, installing software, it just excels to the point where after a week or two of using Manjaro as a daily driver, I just forgot about it and started using my computer as a computer. But what if, hypothetically of course, you don't like Manjaro either? Maybe the default wallpaper threw you off or you don't like the colour green? Maybe you want a more vanilla arch flavour of distro? Well then, I have the perfect distro for you. Introducing Artix. You can think of Artix like a if a vanilla Arch installation script had a GUI with a choice of what desktop environment you wanted it to ship with, as well as grabbing System D by the neck and casting it into the abyss. Artix does all of these things quite well. For starters, if you are concerned about what System D is doing, or you just want a less bloated bootloader experience, Artix has you covered due to its reliance on system D alternatives, as well as giving the user the choice between what kind of distro you want to get out of the box. As previously mentioned, Artix allows you to choose the bootloader and the desktop environment all from the website, and then gives you a nice ISO with it, ready to install onto your system through the GUI installation and the live USB environment it grants you, allowing you to even test the system out on your host system before actually even installing it and making edits to your main drives, something akin to running something like Linux Mint off of a USB, it's, it's all very neat and tidy. Okay, you say, as you ponder for a moment, you look out of your window, observing the high-rise block of flats opposite. You turn back to your main system, momentarily perplexed as to how this jumble of resistors, capacitors, bus lanes and chips all cooperate together to form a fully functioning GNU system, made useful 
by the GNU Core Libs Shell Utilities and Vital System Components comprising a full OS as defined by GAMING! What if you want to use an Arch-based distro, but you're also quite the avid gamer? Well, in that case, the likely distro of choice for you would be Garuda Linux. Now, some people may say that if you want to game on Arch Linux, you might be better off just doing a vanilla install and then going on to install all of your necessary drivers and software manually as to avoid compatibility issues and unnecessary bloatware. And yes, this would be the more effective route to go down if you want to play some games on Arch Linux with, you know, decent performance and no system bloat. However, it can also be a giant pain to do and can take a good while figuring it all out and getting everything working nicely together. But if you just want to get straight into it, Garuda Linux may be your saving grace. Garuda Linux is just like any other GUI-based Arch distro. It comes with a nice user installer, a live environment, and also has a pretty cool Garuda as its mascot, pretty nice. But for you gamer boys, it has even more attractive features. For example, near the end of the installation process, you can choose whether to include proprietary NVIDIA graphics drivers on your system, making the installation process of these normally painful and time-consuming drivers quite simple and fast. Though still painful, you should probably invest in an AMD card in the future, it, it will save you the head hurt. Garuda also has its website, which is a pretty comprehensive site that details quite a few bits of software and tasks you might want to complete. For example, it tells you how you can delete bloat from your system, how gaming on Linux with Windows only video games works, and other fundamental and pretty useful information you will need if you want to make using Linux a viable daily driver. And well, because it is an Arch based distro, you can also utilise the Arch wiki for some of the more fundamental issues you may well encounter during your stay with Garuda Linux. Of course, using the Arch Linux wiki for any of these distros I've listed today will work, as they're all based on Arch Linux, they all use the same fundamental system. You can kind of think of it like, uh, like layers building on top, really. You have the core Linux system, then you have stuff like your desktop environment, you have your software like that, but with the Arch Linux wiki, you can apply it to pretty much any Arch-based distro, and the problems should have the same solutions, or at least very similar ones. And you could see this as getting the best of both worlds, really. You, you're getting the support Arch Linux gets from the Arch Wiki, but you're also getting to use an Arch Linux-based distribution that is already set up for you to a certain degree, making it easier and less time-consuming to set up and just get going. Well, there it is. I think these three Arch-based distros are pretty good, in terms of features and the market they aim to serve, but I personally really appreciate Manjaro for providing me a stable and easy to use system when the previous distro I was using decided to gradually off itself during my two and some months of using it as a daily driver, but I think if there's one thing we can all agree on, it is that having a stable operating system on your daily driver is imperative to a good workflow and sanity. The last thing you want to be doing is trying to use your computer for some very important things, maybe you have something going on at work or school, and for your computer to just brick itself because of an update you did to your kernel the day before. It's everyone's worst nightmare losing data on their on their system, and I, that's something I wouldn't even wish on my worst enemy. So, having a nice, stable, and just works daily driver distribution, Linux distribution in particular, I think is very, very important and Manjaro provided me with that, so that's why Manjaro gets my personal pick as being the best Arch Linux based distribution. Though I do very much appreciate the rest of these Arch based Linux distributions, I've used them all at one point or another, and vanilla Arch Linux is still really really good and I definitely recommend it. Well, I hope you found all of this either useful, entertaining, or a fuel for your burning hatred for me and my lack-luster content. Uploads will return to usual, one every day or every other day, basically as fast as I can make them. I hope you have had a good Christmas and a good New Year's. Well, if you're into that sort of thing, anyway. Here's not dying for another 365 days. Have a good day, everyone. Stay safe, and don't take politics too seriously, because in the end, no one makes it out alive. Take care, my friends.